All right, I want to do a short video on winterizing your Yamaha outboard. I think it's important, especially if you live in the northern climes. Uh, we're temperate, but typically we don't use the boat in the winter unless we get some 80 degree days, which is a possibility. However, I do like to go through the winterization process because there's a couple of things that are important in maintaining the engine that we'll go through as part of the winterization process. So let's get started. But before we do that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button part of winterizing your outboard is putting a fuel stabilization in it now I put this in after every fill so I'm not going to do it right now because I know I've got a good percentage of this already in the fuel system um, but if you don't use this I would recommend adding this to your fuel tank before you winterize your your boat and uh, running the engine uh, long enough to get some of this into the engine all right so one important aspect that uh, quite often is overlooked is the grease for your steering rod um, this is especially true whether you have cable steering or or a hydraulic um, you, you want to get grease in there so what I like to do is give it a pump or two and you're not going to get much in there you'll feel back pressure because there's not a lot of room for it to go so what we'll do then is move the engine back and forth and up operate the tilt and trim as well and give it another pump. Now if you notice I also cleaned the Zerks off so I didn't inject any garbage in there. And after I did that I actually took more grease. A lot more. So we'll do it again. And see if it'll take any more grease. It's kind of solid now. It'll tell you when it's full. You will see some grease coming up the sides. Uh, pull it all the way out. do this just to make sure there's a nice coating of grease on everything um, this is especially important if you do this in salt water I would do this several times a year not just as a winter uh, maintenance so let's go ahead and put it in and out a few times Let's put it center line and that should be good. Hold this for disposal. And um, that part is done. And we'll do the same to the other side. Now I use an electronic flare, which um, 
has no expiration. However, if you have regular flares, I usually do this in the spring, but it will also be a good thing to check your expiration date on your flares. Also check your battery on your electronic flares, make sure they're going. And I'll do this again in the spring. Um, what I probably will do is I'm not using it, um, is take the batteries out because should these batteries rot or leak acid into this, the, well, that's a hundred dollar flare that will be going down the drain. So um, come spring, I'll replace these batteries. All right, so one thing I like to do with winterization is just check the tilt and trim level. Um, it's not really part of it, but I think it's a wise thing to do periodically. So why not either during the 100 hour maintenance or during winterization? So the first thing we want to do is get this all the way up in the air. You also want to make sure your tra trailer is level. Um, so I have done that already. I'm putting the safety down. Because if we were to relieve pressure all of a sudden, it might be under pressure, and this could drop. It's just a safety, uh, safety feature. So let me, uh, let me get a wrench and um, carefully pop this open. So we're looking at an 18 millimeter. I'm just going to crack it, maybe. And I think. There is no pressure here. Um, that is actually full because it's dripping out. Okay. Now, here's for the controversy. If I had needed it, I would have added fluid. I would have added Dextron Merc 2 or Merc 2 compatible. So the Mercon 2 compatible is actually what Yamaha recommends uh, to using your tilt trim fluid, which is unusual. I would have thought they would have used some kind of Yamaha lube, but I have the manual. I keep a manual on every outboard that I've worked on, and that's actually what they recommend. So yeah, Mercon 2. And this little syringe to suck up the Merc on too, put it in, is exactly what you need. It'll work perfectly for you. So one last thing before we wrap this up is we're going to fog the engine. Um, Yamaha does call for an engine fog. I, there's some controversy I've heard about some people doing uh, four strokes versus two strokes. Not necessary. I'm going to follow the Yamaha manual. They do call for fogging it as part of the winterization process. All right, so I'm getting ready to fog the engine. Here's the intake. And um, what I'm going to do is start it up. We've got the water running to it. And uh, that's another thing that I did want to cover is that if you run this in salt, now's a good time to flush it with, uh, with a lot of fresh water. So this is going to be part of that as well. Let me get it started. All right, so being a four-stroke, it didn't smoke a lot. 
I did increase the RPMs uh, probably to around 3,500, 4,000, and I started getting some smoke. I wanted to make sure that the um, the seafoam circulated throughout the engine, and it has. Um, right now we got a good flush, and we're going to turn the water off and do one last step before we call it done. All right, so the last thing we want to do before we call this done, the winterization, is drain all the water out of it. And that's actually fairly simple to do. You lift the engine up and drop it a few times, and that should evacuate all the water out of the system. Um, there is one other thing. So the one other thing is the flush port, and what I'm going to do is disconnect it. And when I tilt the engine up and down, hopefully that'll uh, help in getting rid of any, uh, any water that's in the engine. You can hear all that water, maybe see some of it dripping out. We'll leave it straight up and down, and that is it. So that is the winterization for a Yamaha F-Series engine. All right, so we're done with winterizing this Yamaha F-Series engine. It's an F70. Um, hopefully, you'll have some comments. If you do, drop them in the comments section. And if you like the video, give it a share, give it a like, and thanks for watching.